<laughs> Wanna know why? Ask how. How are the humongous? The stock market has done something absolutely startling in the last week. Over the last three months, it has nosedived almost 2,000 points, 10%. It has gone from 18,312 in May, May 19th, to God knows what dismal depths today. It is wallowing on the bottom. Now, some people are going to blame this crash on inept politicians. Some people are going to blame it on bankers. Some people are going to blame it on Wall Street. And some people are going to blame it on capitalism. And all of those people are wrong. Because who do you really have to blame this on? Biology. Who do you really have to blame this on? Evolution. What do you really have to blame it on? Something called search strategies. Search strategies have been basic to life since life began on this planet approximately 3.5 billion years ago. Our first foremothers were bacteria. They live in groups of 7 trillion. That's more bacteria in one group the size of your palm than all the humans who've ever existed on the face of the earth. And to survive, they need to find new sources of food and shelter. How do they do that? Well, in the case of Caulobacter crescentis, one bacteria, they do it by having an entirely different body type for exploration and another body type for homesteading. They have one body type for boom and another body type for bust. They have one body type for depression and they have another body type for wild, exuberant speculation. What do I mean by that? If you're a Caulobacter crescentis bacteria, and you are born on what looks to be a solid piece of food. You develop a stalk, like a soda straw, that roots you to the ground. It uses a kind of glue to root it to the food that's more powerful than anything material scientists have been able to equal today. And you sit there and homestead. You stay in place. You take maximum advantage of the discovery, the food, beneath your stalk. But when you give birth, in other words, when you divide, you don't necessarily divide into a pair of daughters just like you. Some of your daughters, instead of having soda straws that root them to the ground, have flagella, long whip-like tails, propellers. In other words, some of your daughters are built to stay in place and take maximum advantage of what they've got, of what you've already discovered. And some of your daughters are designed to race, to scud, to soar, to speculate, to go out and find new territories in the hope that it may have more food. Now look, you don't do this as individuals. You don't go out and discover new things as lonely individuals, lone geniuses. In fact, if you're born with a long whip-like tail that, builds, that, that, that prepares you for racing, for soaring across the landscape, you get together with 10,000 other bacteria with whip-like tails, and the bunch of you go out on an expedition. The bunch of you go out on a food hunt. Well, guess what? There are a lot of expeditions that go out on food hunts. Speculation is very iffy stuff. I once gave a lecture to a group of financial consultants on how speculators are like sperm. Why? Because you have to ejaculate 18 trillion sperm in a lifetime in order to have three kids? That's really speculative. Most of those sperm are going to die. And the same thing happens with bacterial search parties, with bacterial speculators. An awful lot of them are going to come up empty-handed. They're going to die out there in the desert. And what do they do when they die? They pack up their genes in a form that basically says to anybody that's listening, anybody back home, don't go where I went. This place is barren. This place is poisonous. They die off. But a few of these search parties, a few of these speculative expeditions manage to find a bonanza, and they send out a very different message. Come gather where I am, feast, make merry, um, eat, drink, and be merry, um, because I've just found the jackpot. Now what happens to bacteria that find the jackpot? When they divide, what are their daughters like? Well, they no longer have whip-like tails. They no longer have super propellers um, pre pre uh, preparing them 
to glide, soar, and explore. Now they have stalks preparing them to homestead. So bacteria, our most primitive ancestors, your foremothers, my foremothers, go through cycles of boom and bust. They go through cycles of exploration and uh, consolidation of homesteading and ripping loose the seams and going all out for it to find something brand new, something impossible. Uh, that's the cycle that we go through. How regularly do we go through it? Well, we've been going through it since at least the days of the Romans. In modern times, in the last uh, roughly 350 years, we've been through at least seven major depressions. Here's how it works. Recessions come on a regular basis. They come every 4.75 years. Depressions, the really big ones, come every 67 years. Um, they've been coming ever since the tulip mania crash of 1637. Here are a few of them. The Tulip Mania Crash of 1637, the South Sea Bubble Crash of 1720, the Mississippi Bubble of 1720, the Panic of 1797, the Depression of 1807, the Panic of 1819, the Panic of 1837, the Panic of 1857, and the Panic of 1873. A lot of these came before there was ever an Industrial Revolution. Are these caused by capitalism? No. If they were caused by capitalism, you wouldn't find patterns of boom and bust in protozoans, single-celled animals. You wouldn't find them in mollusks. You wouldn't find them amphibians. You wouldn't find them in reptiles. You wouldn't find them in insects, fish, mammals, and birds. And yet, you do. You find patterns of boom and bust in snowshoe rabbits, in Galapagos finches, in reindeer on the islands of the Bering Sea, in lemmings in the Arctic, in honeybees, in voles, these little mouse-like creatures. You find them even in the lizards of Santa Cruz, California. Boom and bust wherever you look. Why? Because nature follows a search strategy. Explore, consolidate. Explore, consolidate. Explore, consolidate. But nature has produced something new in the patterns of consolidation in human cultures in the last 100 to 200 years. In 1500, when there were major crashes, the population of towns in England became very concerned about the poor. They didn't want the poor to starve to death. And they began to fashion welfare institutions. They began to fashion safety nets. In the Great Depression of 1929 to 1939, we saw the problems and all of the financial instruments that we created. That's part of what a depression is all about, seeing what the problems are in the new devices that you've created to expand an economy. And then we created some of the greatest um, safety nets in history, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Until then, if your bank closed, if it went out of business, if it even closed its doors, and all your money was in the bank, you didn't have money to pay your rent. You didn't have money to pay for food. It was a miracle that you stayed alive. You queued in a huge line outside the bank hoping to get your money, and you didn't get it. The FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, guarantees that if you have money in a bank, that money will be there. You will be able to withdraw it when you need it. Beyond that, the other banking institutions that were established over the last God knows how many years guarantee that if you've got a credit card, you can pay your rent with your credit card. You can pay for your groceries with a credit card. Other things that came out of the Great Depression of 1929 to 13, 1939, um, the 30 year mortgage and Social Security and the National Labor Relations Board. In other words, an attempt to establish an equitable balance between labor unions and the capitalists who were trying to drive wages down. Um, so, again, this crash is an enormous one that we've just experienced over the last week. Again, 1,852 points in three months. That's a huge dive. It is a huge nosedive. But it is not the fault of the Fed. It is not the fault of the President. It is not the fault of bankers. It is not the fault of Wall Street. It is not the fault of capitalists. It is the fault of the search strategies, the explore, consolidate search strategies that's built into our very biology. And the task that a crash sets us is simple. Build safety nets. This is Howard the Humongous speaking to you from the future. It's your job and my job to make, or <laughs> well, I don't know why, 
Ask how. And now for that sneaky, sleazy, slimy, I'm not kidding you, this thing is really hard to find, little, ah, there, I think, that's, ah, little, off button.